<clears throat> Once again, this is Tao overflows. Love goes beyond duality. In love, on a higher plane, the inner one moves, merges into the other. And there is a feeling of oneness. Duality dissolves. Only in this non-dual love, one can get the glimpse of what is the state of Bhairav that Shiva talks about. We can say that the state of Bhairav is absolute love, no coming back. From the peak of love, there is no falling back. You reach to the peak of love, from there, no return. It is remaining on the peak. This is the reason that there is so much of hankering for sex. Really, sex is not important. The real hankering is for oneness, going beyond duality. But that oneness has nothing to do with sex. In sex, only two bodies have only a deceptive feeling of becoming one, but they are not really one. They are only joined together for a certain moment. For a single moment, two bodies forget themselves at certain times in each other and a certain physical oneness is felt. This hankering is not bad, but to stop it is dangerous. This hankering shows a deeper urge to feel oneness at different planes. We have called Shiva's abode on Kalash. That is symbolic. It is the highest peak, the highest, the holiest peak. That peak we have made Shiva's abode. We can go there, but we have to come down. It cannot be our abode permanently. We can go on a pilgrimage, but we cannot stay there. Love is the highest peak. We can go there at times as a pilgrim, but we cannot stay there. We must return from that. This we see on a day-to-day -day basis in our lives. We go on a pilgrimage of love daily or sometimes and then we return back to our world of duality. Does it not happen? But Shiva is permanently living in the abode of love and love is beyond duality. Duality is of all kinds. In love, this holy pilgrimage happens, but not for all, because Almost no one moves beyond sex. This comes in. Love is experienced for the first time when there is no more hankering for sex. You have gone beyond that. Only then you reach, you have attained to consciousness and you are now going beyond consciousness in the realm of light. That light is love. Because Jesus said, God is love. And it is also said, God is light. So light and love are same. But in a way, as a process, love bridges life and light. So we go on living in the dark valley. Sometimes someone moves to the peak of love, but then falls back falls back 
because it is so busy. When you are going on the mountain, there is shortness of breath, the temperature is very cool, you cannot sustain at that height, at that level. So love is that where the moment it happens, we feel dizzy. We cannot stay in that state for long. But Shiva is the one who is living in that state. This mountain, which is the peak of love, has become his permanent abode. It is so high and you are so low. That is why, you know, the. it is something like this. You happen to visit a very high quality hotel where the rent is per night charges are very very high you can visit it but you cannot live there because your resources are very limited the facilities are there but your resources are limited so too your resources are limited because you have not experienced love you have not gone beyond sex and there is constant hankering for it and you are you go there sometimes reach that peak but you come back in the world of your duality those who have loved they know how difficult it is to be constantly in love don't you think that it is difficult to be constantly in love. One has to come back again and again. This is the relevance of Shiva's abode, the abode of love. But when your inward journey begins and you are going beyond duality, you feel deep within. You can live permanently in this abode of love. Permanently at this abode of love. A bhaira, one who has beyond gone beyond the duality, beyond consciousness, lives in love. That is his abode. When I say his abode, I mean now he is not even aware of love. When you are awakened, when you are not, you are constantly thinking of awakening, Buddhahood, but you are awakened. You are constantly living in that state of awareness. So are you aware of, of, of Buddhahood? Are you aware of your awakening? I mean now he is not that person, Shiva, one who has made love as his permanent abode. He does not even aware of love because to live on the peak of love, the mountain, Kalash, you will not be aware that it is the peak of love. The peak becomes for him plain because that has become his abode. So when you are a musician or you are, so constantly you are living at the plane of music. You are thinking music, you are drinking music, you are eating music, your entire life is music. It's not that for certain moments you go into music. So that is the situation of an awakened one is constantly living in that state of awakening. So Shiva is not even aware of love. Devi is not even aware of love because <coughs> we live in a state of non-love. We stay, live in a state of no music. That's why we are aware of it. But when you are constantly, the music has sink into it. The awareness has sink into you. Love has sink into you. Deep within, then you are constantly living in that energy field. You are sometimes coming to the master and then going then a state comes when you are constantly dissolved like a drop dissolves in the ocean. So you, where the drop lives, 
drop lips in the ocean as ocean. So you have dissolved in the ocean of master and through him in the ocean of love and you are constantly living in the ocean of love. Will you be aware of it? You will not. So Shiva is embodiment of love. So one, he is Bhairav, one who has gone beyond. He becomes the abode of love. The state of Bhairav means that love, that one has become love. Now you are identified as embodiment of love. You are love. You are lovingness. <clears throat> How to make this highest peak possible beyond duality, beyond the state of unconsciousness, beyond consciousness, beyond body, beyond the mind, beyond the soul, beyond the world, beyond the so-called liberation and all those things. How to reach to this peak? First, moving from unconscious to conscious, from conscious to superconscious, then consciousness to light and then beyond light. The technique is Tantra. Tantra is pure technique. So it is going to be difficult to understand. Why is Devi asking this question? What is your reality? Devi is not interested in the outer appearance or the form of Shiva. His scanty clothes, matted hair, the ashes rubbed on his body, but you are more concerned about the outer appearances, form of your spouse. But Devi is not interested in. Only when form disappears, the form of the master, the form of the beloved does not exist for you, then you are going into the reality that he is. The reality is within. He himself is the reality. But the outer, does your clothes make your, your appearance? No, but you are more concerned with the way you address, the way you appear, your gestures and everything. Shiva is beyond all that. A lover, a master is beyond all that. So Devi is <coughs> exhibiting that state when she is not interested in the outer appearance of her beloved. She asks, what is thy reality? You are only interested in how much bank balance your spouse have, how much status, what is his status, what is this, what is that, how many disciples he has. But Devi is not concerned about anything like that. She is only concerned about Shiva and Shiva and no one else. When the disciple is only interested in the master and master and nothing else, what so surrounds him, how many disciples he has, what it is, then you are trying to understand the reality that he is. That's where the journey of transcendence begins. That's where the journey through Vigyana Bhairav Tantra begins. Devi asks questions. I will explain each one of these questions that Devi has asked. What is thy, this, what is thy reality? What is this wonderful universe? What is the form beyond form and all these questions? Then, only then, you can attain to the transcendence that is embedded in Vigyan Bhairav Tantra. Only this much for this morning. Take care and do have a pleasant day.